This is the Barbados Today Morning News Update for Wednesday, October the 22nd, 2014. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. A pleasant good morning to you. The Barbados government last night announced it had elevated the possible Ebola threat to a national security level. Minister of Tourism and International Transport Richard Seeley told Parliament the National Security Council had met on the issue no fewer than twice beginning in August. Silly said a special coordinating committee had been established and refined protocols currently in place had even been tested and proven to the extent that two suspected Ebola patients were recently prohibited from entering the country on board a tanker. The systems are working. There was a tanker, the Noble Spirit, that had, when the protocols were tested was actually denied entry into Barbados waters. Um, it was, there were two persons on board who had um, symptoms that were deemed to be Ebola-like and on the basis of the various protocols, Port Health, the Port Managers, the National Security end of things, Defense and Security, Immigration, etc., the Office of the Prime Minister, we were able to say no thank you. Barbados Sioux Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair says are already overtaxed paid in just over $1.8 billion in taxes to the Treasury within the past six months. The latest statistics released yesterday by the Central Bank of Barbados in its third quarter economic review showed that between April and last month, the Front of Stewart administration raked in about $1.1 million more in taxes when compared to the corresponding period. Since its introduction in June, the controversial municipal solid waste tax has accounted for $19.6 million in tax revenue. Meanwhile, Bank Governor Dr. Delisle Worrell warns that while some inroads have been made in reducing the fiscal deficit, even more cuts will be needed in the public sector in the second half of the year in order to reach the targeted deficit. The fiscal adjustment measures have reduced the deficit by 0.9% of GDP so far this fiscal year. The measures already in place are forecast to yield an additional 1% and a recovery of revenue is expected to yield an additional 2%. Further revenue enhancement and expenditure adjustment equivalent to 2% of GDP will be required in the second half of the fiscal year to bring us to the target deficit of 6.6% of GDP. The central bank governor also forecasts that the economy would grow by 2% next year and 2.3% the following year. He said the island's bread and butter revenue earning sector was on an upward trend. The tourism sector has begun to turn around. Arrivals increased by 8% from the UK, the market which has always recorded the highest expenditure per tourist. Airlift from the US and Canada will increase by 9% and 20% respectively in time for the coming winter season. Tourism value added is estimated to have increased 0.1% so far for the year. Three additional weekly LIAT flights are being added to the airline service between Barbados and Guyana from December 1st. LIAT currently operates a daily service between Guyana's Ogle Airport and Grantley Adams International Airport. A delegation from LIAT's commercial department will be in the Guyana capital Georgetown this week for two road shows to promote the launch of the three additional flights. LIAT will be offering special fares to current and prospective customers who attend the road shows and everyone will be able to book flights right there on location. In sports, the Minister of Sports, Stephen Lashley, is calling for an urgent settlement to the dispute between the West Indies Cricket Board and its players over pay contracts. Speaking in House of Assembly last evening, Lashley said the current situation was worrying and requires a quick resolution. He said he was concerned about the players pulling out prematurely from the tour of India. I would like to call the West Indies Cricket Board, the West Indies Players Association, and of course the cricketers, to ensure that they could get to a point of agreement within the shortest possible time. I think the most important aspect of all of this is that cricket must not be compromised and that the West Indies uh, cricket 
must be uh, returned to a state of normalcy within the shortest possible time. Meanwhile, the West Indies Cricket Board has come up with a four-point initiative to address the recent abrupt end by the West Indies players to the tour of India and the subsequent decision by the Board of Cricket Control in India to sue the West Indies administrative body. The Board of Directors of the WICB last night met in Barbados to formally embark on what it calls the process of a careful and systematic review of relevant events. It has de decided to establish a task force comprising critical stakeholders to review the premature end of the tour to India. The task force will meet with all parties, including West Indies Players Association or WIPA and the players, before reporting its findings to the Board of Directors. It has also agreed to request a meeting with the India Cricket Board to schedule an urgent debriefing with the West Indies Team Management Unit and to assure Cricket South Africa that it will use its best endeavours to ensure a successful tour of South Africa as scheduled. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Sun Power. Welcome back with news from the region that the powerful oil field workers trade union in Trinidad yesterday prevented its members from offloading a ship with $5 billion worth of crude oil from Ghana for the Twin Island Republic. The union is contending that the state-owned oil company Petrotrin had not formulated any protocols to deal with the deadly Ebola virus that has killed nearly 5,000 people in West Africa. But Health Minister Dr. Fuad Khan says the union was overreacting and that the ship overseas Yellowstone had been cleared to dock at port of Point Pier. And finally, on the international scene, serum made from blood of recovered Ebola patients could be available within weeks in Liberia, one of the countries worst hit by the virus. That's the news from the World Health Organization. Speaking in Geneva, Dr. Maria Paula Kieni says work is already advancing quickly to get drugs and vaccine ready for January next year. The Ebola outbreak has already killed more than 4,500 people. Most of the death has been in Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone. In terms of, uh, of uh, serum and, and collection of serum, there are partnerships which are, which are starting to be put in place to have the capacity in the three countries to safely uh, extract uh, plasma. Uh, and, and uh, make preparation that can be used for the treatment of infected patients. The, the partnership which is moving the quickest uh, will be in Liberia, uh, where we hope that uh, in the coming weeks there will be a facility set up to collect the blood, treat the blood, and, and be able to process it then for, the, for use. And that's how we end our Barbados Today morning news update. You can join us again for the afternoon edition. But in the meantime, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper and email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay in supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune into Channel 101 on Lime TV to get the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a wonderful day. This news update is brought to you by...